To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon and download our app OneFin to start learning on the go. It's now time to move forward to next section my dear friends that is section 12.8. Now what is 12.8 talking about? This is interesting. Listen please. Come on. Let me give an example now. Sir, we all know that today's date as the technology is growing day by day. Earlier when there was one requirement to send one piece of a document from one place to another place people used to make use of fax or any other mechanism and now it's completely through whatsapp or emails what not but all set and done even today we cannot send the goods by online mode the goods have to physically move from one place to another place for that purpose we require the support of the persons who are engaged in logistics business yes my dear friends we are talking about service by way of transportation of goods including by way of mail or courier when i say mail we are talking about letters or postal cards or courier practically we have got so many courier agencies professional courier blue dot what not dhl so many are there and transport agencies are there like navata transport srmt transport dls transport so many are there popular transport agencies who are engaged in transportation of goods now in this particular section 12.8 we are actually going to talk about what is the place of supply for service by way of transportation of goods. Now what is that? Listen, let's take an example to understand this better. Let's say there is one company known as X Limited, which is a registered person in Maharashtra. X Limited had to pick up some goods in UP and X Limited registered person in Maharashtra. They contacted one good they contacted one goods transport agency in UP to pick up that goods in UP and deliver it to Maharashtra. So what is going to happen here? That goods transport agency will pick up that goods in UP and send it to Maharashtra. Who is supplier who is giving service here? The service of transportation of goods is being given by the goods transport agency which is in UP. And recipient is X Limited who is a registered person in Maharashtra. Now, for this particular transaction, what will be the place of supply? And law specified that place of supply for this transaction will be Maharashtra. But if X Limited is an unregistered person, then place of supply will be UP. Why? Listen, they have specified that as per provisions of section 12.8, transportation of goods, including by way of mail or courier, they have specified that if recipient is a registered person, then place of supply will be location of such person. Whenever we say location of such person, it means wherever he is registered. So I repeat, if recipient is a registered person, place of supply will be location of such person. But if recipient is unregistered person, place of supply will be the place where goods are handed over for their transportation what a brilliant language what language they have used friends if recipient is unregistered person place of supply is the place where goods are handed over for their transportation handed over means not where they are going where they are actually given to the transport agency in our example gta is picking up that goods in up and then sending it to maharashtra so place of supply will be up if recipient is unregistered person because in case of transportation of goods including by way of mail or courier if recipient is a registered person place of supply will be location of such person and if recipient is unregistered person place of supply is the place where goods are handed over for their transportation let's take another interesting example let's say there are two persons known as mr ramesh and mr suresh both are CA students, both are unregistered person. Now, Mr. Ramesh is in Gujarat, Mr. Suresh is in Delhi. Suresh contacted Ramesh to send some books to Delhi. And what has happened is Ramesh contacted Blue Dot and with the help of Blue Dot Courier Agency, he has sent the books from Gujarat to Delhi. Correct, right? Now, who is given service here? Service is being given by Blue Dot and the service is by way of transportation of goods by courier mode for this particular transaction what will be the place of supply you have to observe that Ramesh is the recipient 
blue dot is the supplier and Ramesh is an unregistered person then what will be the place of supply place of supply will definitely become Gujarat why because if recipient is unregistered person place of supply is the place where goods are handed over for their transportation getting clarity friends and one last special point they have given in 208 which is applicable even though recipient is registered or recipient is unregistered where they have specified that if the goods are being sent outside India if the goods are being sent where my dear friends outside India there is a possibility that sitting in India we might courier some goods to UK US Japan Germany what not so they have specified that if the goods are to be sent outside India then place of supply will be destination of such goods and this concept is applicable even though so if recipient is registered or recipient is unregistered but if the goods are destined outside India then place of supply will be the place of destination of such goods that means we are not going to see from where the goods started we are going to see where the goods are going in case where goods are going outside India so friends final summary now 208 deals with the concept of place of supply in case of service by way of transportation of goods including by way of mail or courier where law specified that if recipient is a registered person POS will be location of such person and if recipient is unregistered person POS will be the place where goods are handed over for their transportation special point they have given is that if the goods are transported outside India then place of supply will be the place of destination of such goods so friends with this we are done with the discussion about section 128 which deals with the concept of place of supply in relation to transportation of goods including by way of mail or courier now let's move forward to next section that is section 129 which deals with the concept of place of supply in case of service by way of transportation of passengers previous point 128 was talking about transportation of goods 129 is now talking about transportation of passengers very 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 powerful concept listen now let's take an example like this let's say Shivateja is a registered person and let's say Shivateja is registered in Hyderabad Telangana state now from Hyderabad I wanted to go to Goa by road wanted to have a road journey by experience by car so in my own car I traveled from Hyderabad to Goa to enjoy there for three days now after I enjoyed for two days after I finished the vacation for two days immediately some urgent meeting has come up in Mumbai where I had to attend that meeting as soon as possible so I thought let me not take a chance by taking my car and going from Goa to Mumbai let me go by flight so while sitting in Goa I booked a flight ticket of Indigo Airlines and I booked a ticket from Goa to Mumbai in the morning time and again in the evening time I booked a ticket from Mumbai to Goa back again because my car is in Goa we know that right already Shivateja a registered person in Hyderabad Telangana state traveled to Goa by road in his own car and as because of urgent meeting in Mumbai Shivateja booked a ticket in Indigo Airlines morning I am going from Goa to Mumbai evening I will come back from Mumbai to Goa and I will take my car and come back to my place Hyderabad clear friends now in this particular scenario who is given me service of transportation service of transportation is given by Indigo Airlines Indigo Airlines is the supplier Shivateja is the recipient what will be the place of supply place of supply for the service of transportation of passengers in this example what I gave you will be Hyderabad Telangana state because they have clearly given in the law that in case of service by way of transportation of passengers if recipient is a registered person place of supply will be location of such person location of person means what wherever he is registered and where is Shivateja registered Shivateja registered in Hyderabad Telangana state so even though I went from Goa to Mumbai Mumbai to Goa still my place of supply will be Hyderabad Telangana state but if Shivateja would have been an unregistered person then law specified that place of supply for Goa to Mumbai will be Goa 
and place of supply for Mumbai to Goa will be Mumbai. How? Listen. Let me give a small table here now. As per section 12.9, place of supply for service by way of transportation of passengers. If recipient is a registered person, place of supply will be location of such person. If recipient is unregistered person, place of supply is the place where a passenger embarks on the conveyance. Embarks means where he gets into the conveyance. The place where a passenger embarks on the conveyance for a continuous journey. Whenever we say continuous journey, it means a case where journey is continuous and there is no stopover. Stopover means where we get down, take one more ticket and go. If you get down and one more bus, that's fine. But if you get down and take one more ticket and go, it's called stopover. Stopover is a case where you have to take one more ticket. For example, when we go in metro, from one place to another place in a metro train, sometimes it happens that metro track is one route. For some reason, since I have to change my track, I have to get down and board another train. But I'll still not take separate ticket. Already first only I've taken that ticket. So that means there is no stopover. Stopover is a case where we have to get down the conveyance and take one more ticket and board another conveyance. So here law has specified that if recipient is a registered person, place of supply will be location of such person. But if recipient is unregistered person, place of supply is the place where passenger embarks on the conveyance for continuous journey. They have also given that return journey is also treated as a separate journey even though booking is done at same time. Example, Shivateja booked a ticket from Goa to Mumbai. Let's say at a time I book round trip Goa to Mumbai to Goa. We can do the booking at a time. So even though I booked a ticket from Goa to Mumbai to Goa, I should separate that. For Goa to Mumbai, place of supply will be Goa. And for Mumbai to Goa, place of supply will be Mumbai. And all this story will come only if Shivateja is unregistered person. But if Shivateja is registered person, place of supply will directly become Hyderabad, Telangana. So as per section 12.9, in case of service by way of transportation of passengers, if recipient is a registered person, POS will be location of such person. But if recipient is unregistered person, POS will be the place where passenger embarks on the conveyance for continuous journey. And one special point they have clearly told there, return journey is treated as a separate journey, even though booking is done at same time. Clear friends? Now one last point in 12.9, what they have given is, in case where a right to passage is given for future use, that means what? Let me tell you. So one time what has happened, Indigo Airlines has come up with one offer where they told you can buy one airline ticket at 2000 rupees and you can use this ticket whenever you want for traveling from one place to another place and they gave validity period of that coupon or voucher as six months. In fact, one time Shivateja purchased that. One time I paid 2000 rupees and I purchased one ticket of Indigo Airlines. Today, I'm not going anywhere, but within six months time, I may go somewhere and I'll use that ticket for the purpose of traveling from one place to another place. But we don't know today from where I'll be going to where. If I'm registered person, no problem. But if I'm unregistered person, big problem. Because if recipient is unregistered, POS will be the place where passenger embarks on the conveyance for continuous journey. So where he enters the conveyance, it's important. And if we buy the coupons, vouchers like this, we don't know where he is going to board. Correct, right? So for this kind of transactions where if a right to passage is given for future use and the point of embarkation is not known, then they have specified that provisions of section 12.9 will not apply. General rule that is section 12.2 will apply. For this particular transaction of right to passage given for future use where the point of embarkation is not known. And what are the general rule, my dear friends? If recipient registered, place of supply will be location of such person. And if recipient unregistered, if address on record exist, POS will be location of recipient. And if address on record does not exist, POS will be location of supplier. All this interesting point of 12.2 already we covered. Friends, 
and please observe one special point here very very clearly they use the word place where passenger embarks on the conveyance for continuous journey one great student wrote in the exam place where passenger embarks on the conveyance for continuous journey one two letters gone meaning only will change don't do that mistake clear right that said that is the story of section 12 9 very very interesting so friends what was 12 1 talking about 12 1 clearly told provisions of section 12 will apply if location of supplier and location of recipient both are in india 12 2 was general rule 12 3 was talking about immovable property 12 4 was talking about restaurant and catering services personal grooming fitness beauty treatment health services including cosmetic and plastic surgery 12 5 training and performance appraisal 12 6 admission to event 12 7 organizing an event 12 8 transportation of goods 12 9 transportation of passengers now my dear friends as an extension to this concept let me ask you one question sir lot of times it does happen that in the course of flight journey or train journey or bus journey whatever it is in the course of journey sometimes we might take some services on board the conveyance we already learnt about goods on board conveyance correct right when we are going in flight we have taken consumed some goods or purchased some goods possible right exactly now take an example shiva teja is travelling from same example shiva teja is travelling from goa to mumbai now in the course of flight journey in front of my seat there is one small screen where there is a facility to watch the movie and i asked them i want to watch the movie they told very good sir please pay 500 rupees now i paid 500 rupees to watch that movie example so shiva teja paid 500 rupees to watch movie while going in the flight so technically if you observe i have taken some services on board a conveyance so in the course of journey i have taken some services correct right now what law has specified is that in case of if you remember already we learnt about goods on board conveyance section 101e in case of goods supplied on board a conveyance place of supply is the place where goods are taken on board already we learnt this concept but here i cannot tell service taken on board because service is an intangible in nature so what they have specified is that very clearly you listen in 1210 they have specified that with respect to services on board a conveyance place of supply will be first scheduled point of departure of that conveyance for the journey otherwise we will see or where the conveyance has started in exam some students are writing where the conveyance started don't use that language please write the word first scheduled point of departure of that conveyance for the journey let's say for example shiva teja went by flight from where goa to mumbai correct or not let's say the flight did not actually start from goa that flight which is actually there in goa to mumbai came from hyderabad so that means that flight origin point is hyderabad so flight has actually come from hyderabad to goa and the same flight is going from goa to mumbai that means generally there is a concept of one stop two stop in aircraft also so originally the flight journey was hyderabad to mumbai and there is one stop at goa so hyderabad to goa to mumbai correct right so where did shiva teja enter the flight shiva teja entered the flight in goa because i am planning to go from goa to mumbai correct or not yes now even though shiva teja entered the flight in goa for that service what i have taken with respect to watching a movie place of supply for that service on board a conveyance it will not be goa it will be hyderabad because the first scheduled point of departure of that flight was hyderabad otherwise we will see from where the flight has actually started that's where they use the word first scheduled point of departure of that conveyance for the journey imagine if the flight would have started from orissa flight is traveling from orissa to mumbai orissa to hyderabad to goa to mumbai and shiva teja is going from goa to mumbai and i have taken service of watching a movie on board and for that service place of supply will be orissa because as per section 12 10 
with respect to services on board a conveyance conveyance could be train bus vehicle or aircraft any kind of thing or vessel anything is possible so 1210 specified with respect to services on board a conveyance place of supply will be first scheduled point of departure first what sir scheduled point of departure of that conveyance for the journey this is a small point about section 12 subsection 10